Snestrack. Hey, thanks to Owen for requesting this via my Patreon page. Here's another one of those games I used to see for rent all the time, but never pulled the trigger. One of those that was always available and never checked out, along with stuff like Operation Logic Bomb, Congo's Caper, and Phalanx, as well as Turn and Burn No Fly Zone, a flight combat simulator played from a first-person perspective inside the plane itself. This was some advanced stuff for a Super Nintendo game, and it's aged pretty well. It's not a bad game. Personally, I'm not familiar with these kind of games outside of stuff like Pilot Wings or the Afterburner games on Sega Genesis, but I thought Turn and Burn was pretty approachable, and I was able to get the hang of things at a reasonably quick pace. The premise here is maintaining a no-fly zone over a particular area, and that means shooting down other planes and occasionally taking out enemy bases on small islands below. There's 16 total missions, and they crank up the difficulty the further you progress by giving the player more variables to deal with, like a limited amount of fuel and missiles, which force you to refuel in mid-air or to land back on the aircraft carrier to reload your weapons. The actual flying and shooting of this game is perfectly fine, it's pretty fun. I wouldn't put this on the same level as something like Afterburner, but I mean, you can't argue with plug-and-play gameplay like this. You turn the game on, and bam, you're taken off from the aircraft carrier, and you're shooting down other planes. You have your regular machine gun, as well as three different kinds of missiles that all vary in terms of range, accuracy, and speed, so you have to decide on the fly which missile to use and when, so that's a nice touch. Unfortunately though, you can only use the machine gun to destroy enemy bases on the ground, and that kind of sucks. You can press select at any time to bring up the radar map, and it works just like the map in Doom. You can still maneuver around in real time and track down enemies and dodge missiles. This feature is really well done and makes it a little easier to get your bearings and destroy those first few enemies. Also in a really nice touch, if you press the L or R buttons, you can peer over your shoulder. That's pretty cool. When you complete a mission, you do have to land your plane on an aircraft carrier. And yeah, I know what you're thinking, it looks tricky, but this isn't exactly Top Gun for NES. They made it much easier here. You just have to line up with the dotted line, and make sure to press and hold B and down at the same time for just a second to decrease your speed, otherwise you'll inadvertently turn into a kamikaze pilot. I should also mention real quick that there's no battery save with this game, only passwords. One thing that might put people off about Turn and Burn is the cockpit viewpoint. I will say it's kind of annoying to have so much stuff blocking your view, but I mean, the whole idea of a game like this is to simulate realism. It's a flight sim. The problem is that it's a flight sim from 1994, so of course the quote-unquote realistic aspects of a game like this aren't going to age well. But it's not game-breaking or anything like that, it's just kind of in the way, and eventually you get used to it. Turn and Burn also has kind of an interesting history. It's actually a sequel to a Game Boy game from back in 1992, Turn and Burn the F-14 Dogfight Simulator. And, well, it's about as you'd expect from a flight sim on the Game Boy. It's not terrible, but I mean, it's a flight sim on an original Game Boy. It's pretty dang limited. The SNES game also received a Game Boy Advance remake called F-14 Tomcat, and it's faithful to the SNES port, although the graphics are a bit bleary. So yeah, here's what Turn and Burn No Fly Zone is. You're given a mission, you get in a plane, you shoot stuff down and blow stuff up, and you land the plane. I can't put it any simpler than that. Not a lot of nuance or variety here, and that's perfectly fine. If there's any flaws here, it's that the attempt at realism definitely feels dated, but it doesn't get in the way. So if you just want to fly an F-14 and shoot down stuff on a 16-bit console, then here you go.